Now, whenever you're out on a landscape photography shoot, and for whatever reason, conditions conspire against you, it always, always pays to have a backup plan. Case in point this morning, I came down to the beach early doors with a view to photographing Lion Rock in beautiful soft dawn light, then carrying on the shoot into sunrise. Unfortunately, neither occurred. I was a bit downcast and a bit, yeah, whatever. I've taken a few photographs, nothing really floating my boat. And then I thought, hang on, hang on here, hang on. Let's try plan B. I've given a couple of comparison shots between certain cameras and uh, certain techniques. See which you prefer. Good morning from Pihar Beach on the wild west coast of New Zealand. This is around about 30 minutes drive from the western suburbs of Auckland and it's a world-class surf beach, but uh, not today. It looks a little bit too choppy for that. Now we had a drive down here yesterday just to check out the beach and, and see what possibilities were for sunrise. Land potential is there, it's always there. But, but unfortunately the weather gods have uh, slipped me a slack one this morning. It's pretty much clagged in. There is a bit of clear sky rolling above my head there as you can see. Hopefully sometime throughout the morning I'm going to get some light cast onto the rocks there. I'm shooting this morning with a Leica Q2 and it's 28mm f1.7 Summilux lens. What I'm liking about this shot is I've got this stream running the length of the beach here and it just snakes off into the ocean. Got a nice reflection of the rock going on and we've got obviously some, uh, some nice reflections of the clouds in there. So uh, that's, at the moment that's working out okay. Now the sun is going to come up there and you can see a little bit of blue sky there is going to hopefully free us up some light onto there. We might be able to make a shot. But you never know. It changes, the weather changes so fast down here, it's insane. Early spring, so conditions are all over the place at the moment. And just a quick word on settings. At the moment, ISO 50, F11, it's giving me around about a 20th of a second. So I've got it on a two second timer, just to eliminate any, any motion blur, any shaking, because it is a bit gusty. It's a bit windy down here. It's like we've got a bit of a storm coming in as well on the horizon there, so I'm not gonna get too many opportunities today to get a decent shot of this. So uh, whatever I get is a bonus. Might be a bit of a retreat back to the van shortly because uh, the weather's coming in. The light is certainly not playing ball at all. So I might need back to the van, get a coffee, get some breakfast, reassess. And what I can see at the moment, that just ain't gonna happen. Well, I've emerged a couple of hours later. Hey, look, we've got a little bit of light casting on the scene. And we're gonna get a bit more once that blue sky comes over. You see that foreground ridge with the dunes there waving along? I'm thinking that might make a nice shot. So I'm just gonna hang about five, try and get a nice photograph, something like that. Foreground grasses, lion rock, but it needs light. It really does need light. Here comes the light now. So we'll get a few shots with the Leica Q2 and then we're gonna smash some with the infrared as well. So much better. A little bit of light on the scene. So I'll take a few shots with the infrared, just because we've got some nice light on there now. This is obviously my beloved Fujifilm X-Pro2 with its 850 nanometer black and white modified infrared sensor. Let's see what that's going to do. I know for a fact it's going to work a treat. Oh, straight away, as, as soon as I click onto this, I mean, the shots from the Q2, they're nice, they're nice enough. Stick it into infrared and it just pops, it just absolutely pops. These jung grasses are absolutely glowing against the dark sand. Now this is looking like my favourite shot of the day so far. We've got a real tiny patch of jung grass in there. And then we've got the rock on the horizon. I'm going to take a shot with the Leica Q2. I'm going to shoot it in colour. I'm going to do a colour version. I'm going to do a black and white conversion. Then I'll shoot it in infrared and just show you a massive, massive difference it makes. Now this shot is working out really nicely. Dune grasses and that cloud above. Now again, it doesn't look too much on the GoPro, but in infrared, you've got these foreground grasses standing out pure white, you've got the black sand, you've got the rock, you've got the blue sky which is going to render dark, and then you've got the white clouds which are going to pop right out. The cloud formations above the rock look like wings, and uh, I, don't know, I don't know, a winged lion, winged horse, no, I don't know, I'm rambling, I'm tired, leave me alone. 
but uh, eh, going well so far. Again, I mean, I wasn't overly infused. You know, when I didn't get the dawn light, certainly didn't get the sunrise. But then you whip out the infrared, and it just, you, honestly, it just gets me all infused again. Just because of the drama, it just looks so, so dramatic. It just transforms daytime photography, it really does. Uh, I encourage anybody that's thinking about it, just, just do it. And even if you're not thinking about it, have a look at it. See what difference it makes. You know, you can get a cheap filter, 720 nanometer filter for your existing camera. All you need to do is stick it on a tripod for longer exposures and you're laughing. You know what I mean? How much is a filter? 20, 30 quid, something like that, maximum. You can get them cheaper, surely. What a difference it'll make to your photography. Around the other side of the rock now. And that's, uh, look, look there, look there. We might make a shot of that. We'll do a colour version, a black and white version on the Q2, and then we'll do it in infrared and just, uh, just compare the three. On reflection, the colour photograph from the Leica Q2 is a clear winner. Again, I took a couple of shots with the Q2. No enthusiasm whatsoever. It's a cracking camera, I love using it. But on a day like this, again, there's, there's no interest in it. There's nothing, nothing different about it. The photographs don't stand out. They're kind of average, but you stick the infrared on and it just, it, it's just completely different. I can certainly feel my mood rising as I pick up the infrared camera, as soon as I look through the viewfinder, wow, it's uh, what a massive difference. You know, you can spend all day now walking around, popping off shots left, right and centre. The weather's coming in from the northwest, so uh, time to call it a draw. And I hope you've got a good idea of the difference between infrared and normal photography. Now, I have made some nice photographs with the infrared. Unfortunately, they've come at a cost. Uh, I chucked my sandals on the beach here and romped off to get a couple of photographs and like a spanner, turned around and you saw my sandal just sweeping away into the ocean hundred dollars hundred dollars they cost me unbelievable what a waste of money and this video is going to probably earn me about five dollars brilliant so as always thanks for checking in and i'll see you on a future episode look at that oh. happy days